Today, the Cornwall Channel are in St Ives, and I'm here to give world champion fencer Richard Bonehill a lesson on how we do it up in St Austell. Here we go. What we're going to do, Paul is going to attempt to kill me. Of course, you mustn't try this at home. If you were fencing, you would be wearing modern equipment like this mask, so it's very, very safe, as opposed to what we're doing now, where we're taking our lives in our own hands. Are you ready? I'm ready. On guard! On guard! Go! Ah! What? I originally learned fencing when I was at school. I, had, uh, I was given basically the choice of cross-country running or fencing. Cross-country running was running around half the country in freezing cold and snow and rain. And fencing was inside in a fencing cell and you get to dress up and you keep nice and warm. So I thought, that's for me. And that was about 53 years ago. <laughs> so um, obviously I quite like it. I've been fencing all my life. And um, when you get to a certain age, i.e. 40, you become a veteran, so you fence as a veteran. And in 2010, I won the Veterans World Sabre Championship in Croatia, which was a fantastic thing because to win a world championship is the pinnacle of anyone's career. Yeah. Does it ever sink in, being world champion? It obviously, when you strive for something all your life, yeah. it's, it's very, very important. After I won it, I would wake up every morning and say, I am world champion. And then Lynn, my wife, would say, yeah, but take the rubbish out. <laughs> so she brings you straight back but down to earth. Right. So uh, you told me earlier that once you're a world champion, you remain a world champion. You are always a world champion. Yeah. Although you might lose it the next year, once you have it, it's a bit like being an Olympic champion. You are always a gold medalist. Yeah. So fencing has, uh, has served you well in it, like a TV and film career, I understand. I, absolutely. I mean, I've been really, really lucky because I've never had to grow up, basically. Right. I've been able to make a living out of um, swords and horses, the right. two things which I really love. Um, and to me, it's the most fantastic job in the world. Yeah. Do you hold the record for being killed the most times in a James Bond film? I think I do, yes. <laughs> yeah. I've appeared in five James Bond films, right. mostly as dead bodies, right. um, <laughs> and numerous dead bodies in each one. Um, I do get shot and blown up and uh, generally abused. Um, but um, Well, that's an eyes for you. It is, absolutely. It's the, it's the fun in it, really. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but kind of floating... <laughs> face down in freezing cold water, it can sometimes, yeah. it's not always enjoyable, but it's, they pay you good money, so it's all right. And it's harder than it looks, I suppose, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially if you've got someone kind of coming down a water chute and landing on your back, right. um, which is what happened with me and Grace Jones. Oh, right. But, um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, as long as you don't swear too much, it's fine. <laughs> now, I don't think I've ever been in the same room as a stormtrooper, an imperial stormtrooper. I mean, you played several roles in Star Wars, didn't you? I did. I was in two of the early, of the original trilogy, um, which was Empire Strikes Back, which is quite often named as the most influential and famous film in the world, and Return of the Jedi. Uh, and I was young and fit, and I was an average size, so I fitted into lots of costumes. So um, I did lots of work, basically with different forms of helmet or bucket, on your head. So I was a snow trooper and a storm trooper and um, played lots of different alien characters. You were Re Yees, weren't you? Wasn't Re Yees, yeah, yeah, Num Nine, oh, right. um, and uh, as well as being hot troopers. And it's funny how things work. I mean, Tauntaun Handler I was given the job as, basically because I knew about horses. Right. And the production knew that I could handle a horse, yeah. so they thought I could handle this great big <laughs> strange looking monster. Right. <laughs> it was just another film that was, in those days I was working as an extra and an action double. Um, the, the fight choreogra choreography came later. Um, and you just turned up for work, you didn't know what the hell was going on, you were put into a costume, you were told go across there, get shot, fall down, next shot. You know, whatever. Yeah. One of the original Star Wars um, Stormtroopers helmets sold a couple of years ago for £55,000. I bet you wish you'd 
kept yours on and drove home. In the I wish I, I wish I had. Unfortunately, you couldn't. You had to sign everything in oh, right. in the morning. Yeah. And at the, in the evening, sign it out. Yeah. But how I actually got in got into it was that um, I was originally a designer, a jewelry designer, and a goldsmith, and I did that for ten years. And then I just decided I was getting fat and a bit bored. So um, I decided that I wanted to go into films. And I went away and I rode in Wild West shows and medieval jousting shows, right. travelling shows. And then someone asked me, uh, they saw me, and they asked me to double um, for James Mason, right. who was one of the old Hollywood stars uh, in a film. and. Um, I started riding and, and it yeah. took off from there. Yeah, I mean, it, took, it did take off. I mean, how many films have you been in, like big Hollywood movies? And I, I, I've lost count, but really? it, um, I mean, it's over 30 years yeah. and it includes Star Wars and the Indiana Jones movies, Rob Roy, Man in the Iron Mask, basically uh, anything to do with, with fighting and riding. Yeah. Here on the Cornwall Channel, we never name drop, but uh, who's this you're being pinned to the ground by, Richard? These are a few of the cast from The Man in the Iron Mask. On the left, we have Gabriel Byrne. Next to him, Leonardo DiCaprio, John Malkovich, Gerard Depardieu, and Jeremy Irons. Fencing at Cornwall is fantastic. Um, I joined Truro Fencing Club 20 odd years ago, and there were four members. And now we've built it up, and we are one of the major clubs in the UK, especially in Sabre, which is one particular discipline. And this year, we had three people representing Great Britain at the Olympics, out of a total of ten for Great Britain. And our head coach, John Southfield, is now Great Britain coach. Right. So it's been a fantastic journey. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking to do now is to build a £4 million centre specifically with Fight Club, yeah. specifically for martial arts, including fencing. Right. But of course the first rule of Fight Club is you never mention <laughs> Fight Club. Right, yeah. But we're at the moment we're fundraising for that and yeah. trying to buy the land in the middle of Truro. I mean roughly how many people are fencing in Cornwall? Is there a... We have 100, 150 people in the club right. and then we have school clubs and satellite clubs, another 400 there. Right. And then there's four other clubs in Cornwall, um, but they're much smaller and they don't have the dreams and aspirations that we have. Right, yeah. So what happens to old Imperial Stormtroopers after 35 years? <laughs> <laughs> um, Where have they gone? <laughs> what are you up to now? Well, well most of them are dead. <laughs> That's right. um, we had a shop in Truro, an antique shop, for 14 years. Uh, which did specialise quite a lot in swords and, and military things. And then we started uh, an antiques fair once a month in Los Widio, which was now 23 years ago, yeah. which is now the longest running fair in Cornwall. And four years ago we started one in Kingsley Village uh, on the A30 at Fratton. And that's been a fantastic success. That's a large fair. It's uh, three times a year for two days and we get an average of a thousand people a day through. I, I think that the Kingsley Village Antique Fair that you run is the friendliest in Cornwall, I think. Well, that's the thing. I mean, one, what we like our fairs, I mean, it can be fairly stressful, yeah. but we like everybody. It's like one big family, yeah. and we like everyone to be really... It's all down to the organisation. If you get the organisation right, and you build up this massive collection of friends, they come along, they have a good time, and hopefully they take money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've to be careful. No, I know. I'm just, <laughs> if I burst into song, it's going to go out, isn't it? Yeah. Good morning. Modern fencing has got three disciplines, yes. basically. Three different weapons. Right. The foil, the sabre, and the echo. Right. And this is a foil, and each one has a different target. Right. Uh, and that one is just, that's really just the practice weapon. Okay. And uh, the target is the torso. Is and it? The, the reason okay. for that is that that's where all the vital organs are. Yeah. I'm at a disadvantage there then. You I? are. Because <laughs> the biggest target. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> um, that was never ever used in combat, ever. Okay, yeah. It's just a practice one. Okay. This is the epee, right. which is the closest that you get to the old dueling rapier. Right. Um, so the target for that is the whole of the body. Right, okay. Um, and it's a point, both of these are point weapons only. Right. Uh, so you can't cut with them. Right, okay. And this is the sabre. Well, right. I fight all three, but this is my main weapon. Right. This is what I won the world championships with. Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's very, very light. Yeah. And this has been developed from the old cavalry sabre. Right. And the target basically is everything above the waist. Right. Because below the waist, you were sitting on a horse. Yeah. And as you can see, they're very flexible, they're right. very safe, okay. and they're very light. Right. Now, that has been developed from this. Yeah. Now, this is an original 1796 officer's cavalry saber. Right. This type of saber was used at the Battle of Waterbury. Right. And it was one of the most deadly cutting weapons that you could ever imagine. Let's have a feel like that. And in fact, the French complained <coughs> because of the vicious injuries that that actually well, yeah. <laughs> inflicted in warfare. It's, it's hard. I mean, I can't you imagine can take, that. You can take a man's head off or a man's yeah, arm yeah, quite yeah. easily with that. Yeah. Um, when you handle a lot of these, one of the yeah, fascinating yeah. things in filming is you get to handle a lot of original weapons. Yeah. You realise what tremendous upper body yeah, yeah, strength yeah. they have. Yeah. Because you would sit on a horse with that. Yeah. And basically, you would charge forward, cutting right. down like that. Yeah. Cutting away from the horse's head. Yeah, of course. <laughs> because if you cut in yeah. and you miss the person on the ground, yeah. you manage to um, severely hurt yeah. your horse. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Those were the days, eh? Those were the days. Those were the <laughs> days I should have lived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would have loved what? You would have loved riding into battle? Oh, I mean, in film, probably the biggest high you can ever do right. is to be in a cavalry charge. Really? Because not only are you thinking about exactly where your position is, everything, but once a charge starts, yeah. the most horses will just go. Right. And you realise that if you actually fall off, right. you're likely to get trampled to death. Yeah. So it's um, it's pretty hair raising and pretty wonderful. It's another world, isn't it? That it yeah. is. And when when you think that obviously in battle. You've got cannon fire, explosions going off, yeah. people on the ground, absolute mayhem, no communication. Yeah. They, were, they were real men in those yeah. days. They were, yeah, when men were men. When men were men. Yeah. Right, there's a few medals here, Richard. There are indeed. These are some <laughs> of the medals. I've won, uh, over the years, I've won 53 titles, yeah. which are gold medals besides silvers and, and yeah. bronzes. Fantastic. Um, and these are some of the ones which include Commonwealth medals, uh, and on the end there is the World Championship Medal. Yeah. And the FIE, Federation International d'Escrime, right. which is the governing body of all fencers, yes. then give you this for becoming a World Championship Medalist, which of course I am extremely proud of. It's likely to happen once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm still going for it, but um, once is... Is good enough. Yeah. Oh God! Ah!